Okay, try with multi clutch block. So far, we have discussed about the try block and the catch block. And today, we will understand what is try with multiple clutch block. Try with multiple clutch block. This understanding is very important because uh, uh, most of the questions are asked from here. And what is the actual requirement of using multiple clutch block? We will have we will need to have that understanding firstly, right? And what is the actual purpose of using multiple clutch block? For example, let us say that uh, uh, this is the uh, typical example of try try block followed by multiple clutch block. We have uh, one, two, three, four. We have four catch blocks and only single try block. So when you are not sure, like if you are defining, if you are uh, defining an instruction and the instruction, if you know that the instruction is going to be a risky code, right? if you are not sure what kind of exception this risky code is going to generate, if you have a risky code and you are not sure what kind of exception this risky code is going to generate, right? there are multiple possibilities, you know that there are multiple possibilities here. You know that uh, this risky code may generate in the runtime it may generate three different exceptions i mean uh, there are three possibilities of an exception in the runtime right let us say that uh, the first exception looks like uh, it may generate arithmetic exception you are not sure about it right it may generate null pointer exception you are not sure about it it may also generate something like uh, uh, index out of bound exception not sure about it right and it may also generate a different exception uh, which is not falling in this three category different exception right different exception in the sense uh, it is not going to be it is it's going to be a different exception uh, not including these three exceptions but it could be like uh, say that uh, other exceptions other exception, right so in this case you will use what a try block with multiple catch block right the runtime if it is an arithmetic exception this exception will be caught here caught by this catch block this exception will be handled by this catch block if it is an uh, l pointer exception this exception will be handled by this catch block and if it is an index out of bound exception this exception will be handled by this cache block and if it is a different exception among in uh, not including these three exceptions if it is any other exception apart from these three this will be handled by this the exception block. right so this is how as a good programming practice this is how you, you will have to uh, define an exception if you are not sure that a risky code is going to generate uh, uh, what kind of exception the risky reward is going to generate if you are not sure about it please make sure that you are using multiple cache blocks right the specific exception will be handled by the specific cache block right this is a good programming practice right i can i can write this code in in a simplified way so this code can be replaced just like this this is a replacement so this is how the replacement code will look like Replacement code is for try block and a simple and a single catch block. I can also use like this. This is also possible, and uh, this is also uh, going to, you know, uh, going to be working out. Okay, both are same. Both are same in the sense. Even if you use this code, the program is going to be terminated normally. Even if you use this code, the program is going to get terminated normally. But the question here is, you cannot print the exact exception that is occurring. But if it is an arithmetic exception, you have to make sure that the handling code is catching the arithmetic exception. If it is an null pointer exception, you have to make sure that the handling code, handling code is catching the exact null pointer exception. If it is an index out of code exception, you have to make sure that it is catching the exact index out of code exception. Right. So in other words, I can simply in other words, I can simply say give me a minute. 
ஹலோ ஆ பண்ணுங்க பண்ணுங்க கிளாஸ் பண்ணுற இன் அதர் வேர்ட்ஸ் ஐ கேன் சிம்பிளி சே ரைட் எ குட் ப்ரோக்ராமிங் ப்ராக்டிஸ் இஸ் லைக் இஃப் யூஆர் இஃப் யூஆர் ஷோர் தட் எ ரிஸ்கி கோட் இஸ் கோயிங் டு ஜென்ரேட் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் எக்ஸப்ஷன் யூஸ் மல்டிபிள் கேட்ச் பிளாக்ஸ் ரைட் அண்ட் போத் ஆர் போத் ஆர் வேலிட் பட் திஸ் இஸ் நாட் அட் ஆல் ரெக்கமெண்டட் பிகாஸ் யூர் வில் நாட் பி ஏபிள் டு டிஸ்பிளே தி ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் எக்ஸப்ஷன் Right. Let us take a let us take a small piece of example. So this is the example code. For the better understanding, I am taking this example. Now you tell me, I have a small piece of Java code. So this is the Java code, right? So let us debug this code. Debug in the sense, let us analyze uh, how the memory gets allocated in the runtime. Let's start the debug. So the first line says, uh, "Please allocate a memory in. Uh, please create an array of size three, right? So this instruction is going to create an array in the back in the memory, and size of the array is going to be what three." One, two, three. Three blocks of memory will be created, and uh, the reference variable name is going to be A. Right? And we all know that the index will starts from zero. This is self-explanatory. Index is going to start from zero, and one here it is going to be two. Right? and this is what uh, happens in the uh, you know in the memory point of view for this first instruction right and the control again goes jumps to the second instruction from here the control will be jump to here right here we are performing the allocation we are allocating values right if you see here in the index 0 in the 0th index i am allocating something like 10 by 10 10 by 10 10 will be evaluated to what 1 So the value one will be assigned here, isn't it? At a of zero, the value is going to be one, right? And the control jumps to the next line. The next line is ten by two. I mean twenty by ten. Twenty by ten means, and the value uh, it will be evaluated to two. So two will be assigned to the index one. Here. The value two will be assigned, right? Thirdly, the control will jump to the next line, which is which says thirty by ten, and assign this value to the index two. Thirty by ten is nothing but it gets evaluated to three, number three. Number three will be assigned here. Okay. Number three will be assigned there, and fourthly, and we have what uh, the next instruction four forty by ten forty by ten gets evaluated to what four, but we are assigning this four to a of three. A of three is nothing but it is it is an index that is not even uh, that that is going out of Out of the boundary, right? This is the risky code here, isn't it? This is a risky code. What is the risky code? What what exception this risky code is generating now? It is generating an exception. What kind of exception? Out of index, out of bound exception, right? So in this case, what I will be doing? Very simple. I will place this risky code. I will. I am going to place this risky code in a typical try block. Risky code. I will place this risky code in where? Where? In the typical type block. I will pay. I am going to place this risky code in the type block. Right. 
right so this risky code is generating now uh, in this context it is generating index out of bound exception you see here in this context it is generating what index out of bound exception right so the exact the exact handling code has to be index out of bound exception the catch block has to be very specific right in this context it is generating index out of bound let us understand one more thing what if i try to write a code like this what if the code is like this instead of this what if the code is <coughs> a of 3 with a b on mute sir a of 3 equal to 10 divided by 0 right previously the risky code is like a of 3 equal to 40 by 10 right in this case it is generating index out of bound exception right but in this case it will generate arithmetic exception why it will generate arithmetic exception every in every java program the right hand side whenever you are using assignment operator the right hand side will get evaluated first right in the right hand side we are doing a mathematical operation which is throwing an arithmetic exception right and again uh, so firstly it is giving arithmetic exception after evaluation and followed by it is uh, it is also giving what i mean it is also going to give what index out of what exception but this will not be considered this exp this this uh, arithmetic exception is getting recognized first See if you understand this code I write this code in this way a of 3 equal to 10 divided by 0 this code is potential enough to generate two ex two exceptions one is what this is generating arithmetic exception and this piece of code is generating index out of bound exception but the question is which exception will be recognized first by the java that's the question right this piece of code will get recognized first by the java right hand side is going to get recognized first that's it it encoded an exception then it, it will not uh, check for the second exception right this exception needs to be handled first right what is this exception here now uh, in this case it is going to generate arithmetic exception so i need to specify a catch block which is going to catch arithmetic exception right so i can say i will include this code in the try block once again right so this is the second case second scenario first scenario we were able to generate uh, index out of bound exception the second scenario we are able to generate arithmetic exception right so i will be using another catch block because uh, this this is the second possible exception that can be generated let me catch arithmetic exception a right depend during the runtime when this code uh, depending upon the runtime during the runtime this code has potential enough to generate either index out of bound exception or arithmetic exception we are not sure which exception is going to generate during the runtime in order to make sure that the right exception is handled properly by the catch block the right exception is getting properly handled by the catch block we go for multi catch blocks because this multi catch blocks ensures the right exception is handled the specific exception is getting handled and the specific message will be displayed in the console right so that is what i have said here see the risky code has potential when a risky code has potential enough to generate more number of exception right and use the same number of catch blocks 
we generating this for example if it is potential under for generate three exception null pointer exception now also i have included here right use the three uh, catch blocks and followed by default catch block this is a default catch block these are the specific catch blocks this is the default catch block right if there is no match found in these three catch blocks the default catch block will be executed for example if so this risky code is encountering uh, the uh, an unexpected exception the exception which we uh, which we are not anti which we have not anticipated that exception will be handled by the this catch block the last catch block right this is the purpose of using what try with multi multi catch blocks this is one of the famous interview question uh, what is the difference between uh, this uh, this kind of i mean uh, a single try and catch block and try with multiple catch block very simple both are going to both uh, even this case it is going to handle exception even this case it is going to handle exception but it is, this one is highly recommended why this one is highly recommended why this one is highly recommended because we we are able to handle this specific exception and it is getting displayed in the console specific exception will be handled there right and, and one more one more thing is in a try block at a time only one exception can occur must we must have that understanding see this is the code this is, uh, this is the risky code that we have assumed in our previous example isn't it this risky code is generating uh, it has potential enough to generate two exception one is arithmetic exception and index out of bound exception a of 3 is not here right a of 3 is somewhere here a of 3 is somewhere here, out of bound. And we are assigning a value, we are assigning something like a, you know, a large number, I mean infinity, arithmetic exception here. Firstly, this will be recognized. Firstly, this block will be recognized. Right hand side block will be recognized. So only one exception can occur at a time, and only one catch block will be executed. Right? We can say that uh, even this is also an exception thing, right? But that's okay. This will be ignored because it will recognize this first, and uh, it will check for the uh, relevant catch block. That's it. it. Will recognize this and it will check for the relevant catch block. This uh, it will not it is not going to consider this. Right? All the catch blocks must be ordered from specific to specific exceptions to most to general exceptions. Right. Let us understand this thing with the uh, you know small code snippet. So this is my Java program. See if I just run this. See uh, this is the risky code here. I'm not using any any try block or any any catch block. Just the risk. What I know that exception will be generated. Now let us understand what kind of exception it is going to generate. Let me run this. array index out of one just make a note of this java dot array index out of bound exception because a of 3 is not there it is out of the uh, out of the boundary the size is the index starts from 0 1 1 2 there is no place for 3 3 is away from the index that's why we are getting out of board, right? What if you do a small changes here? What I'm instead of 10, I'm using 0. Right? Let it be like this. Instead of 10, I'm using 0. Right? Now, do you think it is going to generate the same exception? No. This time it will be generating what? Arithmetic exception because the priority will be given to the right answer. I have lost that code one minute. One minute, one minute. Anyway, let me write some code before uh, before that. Let 
points to be remembered. So what are the points? Uh, see, let us say that I have an array a equal to new int array of size 3 size is 3 if i am assigning a value a of 3 so if the size is 3 it means that index starts from 0 1 2 i am assigning a value that is out of the index out of the index if the value is going to be like 50 divided by 0 50 50 upon 0 right and if you take uh, this right hand side so let me keep it like this so a of 3 and uh, pi upon 0 the pi upon 0 will generate what uh, arithmetic exception this a of 3 is potential and for generate what index out of bound exception so which one will be recognized first that's the question so this will be recognized first right hand side will be recognized first and the exception exception will occur so the conclusion is the typical conclusion will be like this at a time only one exception will be recognized and only one catch block will be executed. So the catch block can be very specific or general. So it is highly recommended to have the catch flow very specific, very simple. right so this is what our previous example so now uh, so this is the code that is going to generate an exception let me write this code in the crash try block try block right and uh, let me have two catch blocks so let me uh, help you to understand what is uh, the general generalized catch block this is the generalized catch block why this is generalized catch block this is generating uh, like what in this case it is generating index out of bound exception right but we are not making i mean uh, we are this handling code is completely generated is not specific because if it is a specific the exception should be like index out of bound exception but we are making keeping it very general we are using the parent class to cast the exception. Right? What I am saying is this is not recommended. I am saying, right? Let us uh, try to print this. taking a lot of time see array index out of one but we are handling this exception with the exceptional class this is the uh, this is a concept of catching uh, i mean uh, handling the exception with the generalized catch block see here the exception that we get is what arithmetic exception, I mean, array index out of bound exception. 
see this hierarchy this is the array index out of bound exception you can directly use this specific specific exception will be if you are using this directly it is called as a specific specific catch block handling but what we are trying to do we are using the parent class Array index of bound exception uh, is falling under index of bound exception index of bound exception is falling under runtime exception runtime exception is under exception so we are using this exception class directly general class directly this what we this is what we call it as centralization but we should always go for specialization specialization means direct exception name needs to be used in the cache block that is highly recommended okay so why because this code uh, now this code will generate uh, this code is generating arithmetic exception uh, index array index out of bound exception let me use this here right and if i make some little changes instead of 40 divided by 40 upon 10 i am using 40 upon 0 right now this code will generate what runtime it is going to generate arithmetic exception the small changes right and the last catch block is like uh, let me keep it like this exception depending upon the risky code depending upon the runtime during the runtime now it is generating arithmetic exception if you run this piece of code uh, see this catch block is getting executed okay. if i make little changes like 10 now it is index out of bound right i should get array, uh, array index out of bound exception so let us say that uh, I am trying to uh, keep this as a of two, and then yeah. Now, now there will be no exception. Now there will be no exception. It is blank. Output is blank. There will be no exception because this piece of code is not generating any exception. Okay. Now what I am trying to do? So now uh, I am just saying. String str equal to null. Sum dot o dot null dot two. Sorry, str dot length. Now this is not even a risky code because. Uh, the right hand side part is getting evaluated successfully and the left hand side part is just getting fitted into the size of the array right so this is not a, no this is a risky code okay. this is a risky code and uh, if this is happening in the runtime this catch block will not get will is not going to handle this right this catch block also is not responsible to handle this in that cases if you are expecting any exception that is not even anticipated then you will specify an additional exceptional block in the form of generalization I mean you will keep an exception class in the last of the catch hierarchy so that the exceptions that are not anticipated will be will be handled here let me run this Signal pointer exception is handled there now. This is handling null pointer exception. What is the proof? Look, let me use one system dot out on the statement. Exception block. Exception block. This is the proof. So this is the proof that this catch block is. So this is what uh, this is what all about uh, uh, you know try with multi cache blocks try with multi class blocks is used to define a single try block and uh, you can uh, keep multiple cache blocks right whenever a try block can be called followed by one or more cache blocks each cache block must contain a different exception handler 
this is one exception only this is one exception only right and the risky code if the exception that is gen gen getting generated in the risky code during the runtime will be cat will be caught or will be handled appropriately by the respective catch block right? if if the catch blocks are not matching we will have to ensure that there is a default catch block that is placed at the placed in the exception hierarchy subsequently in the end of the exception statements this default exceptional uh, this default exceptional handling will make sure that uh, the exceptions that are not even anticipated will be will be handled there right why this is recommended we need to make sure that the exception proper exceptions are caught, caught appropriately and these are the things these are the points to remember at a time only one exception will be recognized and only one cache block will be executed so this is the exception hierarchy we have to uh, like memorize this for the better understanding this is one of the few examples this is a typical example where you can uh, you can find uh, the risky code is potential enough to generate two two exceptions one is uh, arithmetic exception and second one is index output depends upon the inputs uh, that we give so priority will always given to the right hand side just type in the chat box if you have understood to you know.